Let me ask you a question. When you hear the term slow living, what is it that comes to mind? What do you imagine slow living might look like? Does it seem lovely and relaxing or does it seem boring and lazy? I have a feeling that many people have a misconception about what slow living actually means. So let's dive into what it is that slow living actually is and what it isn't so that you can better decide if it's something that might benefit you. And then let's talk about what those benefits might be. Slow living is actually a mindset. It's a mindset by which you curate your life to do the most meaningful conscious activities that are in line with what you value the most in life at a speed that works for you. It's not trying to do things as quickly as possible or even as slowly as possible. It's doing them at a speed that's right for you. It doesn't only mean doing things like knitting and napping and walking slowly through nature. It could mean skydiving. It could mean starting a new business. It could mean any number of things. It could mean working 12 hours a day. Whatever that is that you want or need to do in a given day, doing it in such a way that slows down a little bit your thinking process. It generally means not defaulting to multitasking. It means putting your mind to the activity that's in front of you right now and doing it in a way where you are fully present fully conscious, aware of what's happening in your process, and then going on to the next thing when you're done with that. And slow living has become a movement for people who want to live a more meaningful, balanced life. Some of the most active, busy people that you know are actually practicing slow living while they're doing those things. It means having more focus, paying more attention, doing things singularly versus multitasking, doing things more consciously, thinking about what it is that you want to be doing, how to structure your day-to-day life so that you're doing the things that you want to do or that you know you really need to do and prioritizing them versus trying to do everything all at once and trying to do the things that other people are telling you you should be doing somehow. You can be the CEO of a massive company and live a slow living lifestyle. You can be an entrepreneur starting up your own small business in a slow living way. You can go skydiving and kayaking and marathoning all in a slow living way. It also isn't just about the major activities in your life. It's also about the day-to-day activities that you have and going about those in such a way that is more present and in the moment. I'll give you a little example of that. When I wake up in the morning and I grind my coffee beans before I make the pot of coffee, after the beans have ground and before they go into the coffee maker, I stop and smell those coffee grounds. I take it in for just a minute, just just a few seconds really. And because I enjoy the smell of freshly ground coffee. And if I were to just grind the coffee and dump it in the machine and then enjoy my coffee, that's nice. But just that added second that it takes to just, you know, stop and smell the roses, it's very similar to that, right? Smelling the coffee, yes. Those freshly ground beans are amazing. And that adds just a little bit of extra joy to my day. That's a slow living practice. Slow living is about being intentional with your time. It's about being purposeful with the things that you choose to do on a day-to-day basis and how you do them. That's the key. It's about the how, not about the what. It's not what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. It doesn't mean that you're going to lay on the couch all day and watch TV unless that's actually what you want to do. And that's just fine. And so I'm wondering if this is a new way of thinking about what slow living actually is. And if so, does it make you rethink how you might be able to use it in your life? There are a multitude of benefits to slow living and and the idea of slow living. 
Harvard Medical School did a paper on the benefits of slow living. Let me go through a few of the things that they highlight. One of the major benefits is the possibility that it can positively affect your health. And it can do this by reducing stress, by reducing your blood pressure maybe, because if you are constantly multitasking and trying to figure out what it is you're supposed to do next and, and you know, just kind of going with what life throws at you, it can create a, a sense, a loss of control. It can create, um, you know, a sense of, it, it can just add to your stress. And so reducing that by being more focused, by being more intentional, by having more control over what you do and how you do it it can really bring down a lot of that anxiety and stress. And it, you know how stress and anxiety affects blood pressure. It just does. It can also improve your social interactions and your relationships long-term. When you sit down to have a conversation with somebody, if you do it with the ideals of slow living in mind, meaning you are not multitasking and being on your phone and flipping it, you know, flipping through it. You are not, you know, constantly paying attention to all of the other things happening around you. When you are really focused, when you decide you're going to sit down and, and have a conversation with somebody and you can really focus on them and who they are and how they are and asking questions and really engaging in deeper conversations, your social interactions are going to be much more meaningful your relationships are going to grow over time because you're really focusing on that person. One of the less talked about benefits to slow living practices has to do with when you're getting older. It, it, can, it doesn't have to be just when you're getting older, but especially as you're getting older and being more aware of your physical surroundings, being more aware of your, of your body and your body's sensations as you move through the world helps you be more careful. It helps you when you're in the moment realizing that you're about to go down steps that might be slick or that might be a little steeper than you're used to and using the handrail instead of just flying down the stairs or when there's something in the back seat of your car instead of twisting around really fast to grab something being a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about making sure that you don't tweak your back while you do that. Those kinds of things can just really help not have unnecessary injuries as you get older. And that it's especially beneficial as you get much older into your late 70s and 80s and 90s in terms of minimizing your fall risk. If you've ever been around people who are in the aging process, if you have parents or, or other loved ones or friends who are in that process, if you're not yourself, you know that falling is one of the major risks to senior health. And so exercising the muscles that it takes to develop the habits of a slow living lifestyle can really have long-term health benefits for you and help you reduce your susceptibility to injury as you get older. And one of the most profound benefits of slow living is that when you are doing an activity with thoughtfulness and you are present and in the moment and experiencing everything about that, um, about that activity instead of multitasking or being focused on all the things around you, when you are focused, that activity, whatever it is that you're doing, actually creates a sense of time slowing down. When you're really focused on something, time slows down. You experience it as, as something more profound. The more we perceive what's going on around us and we absorb those um, perceptions, the more there's a time stretching effect. I know this might sound really silly, but it's true. And especially as you get older and our days become, you know, the days in front of us become fewer than the days behind us. What an amazing gift to have to be able to just a little bit slow time down, not slowing time down, meaning, you know, sitting around doing nothing, but slowing time down that 
when you're on that kayak going through those rapids, when you're so focused on what you're doing in front of you, when you are in the process of building a business and you have all of these tasks in front of you and you really are able to focus one by one by one by one, it slows down the effect of time passing. And I can't imagine a better outcome. And so what I hope you take away from this video today is that slow living does not mean boring. It doesn't have to mean boring. It can mean an exciting, vibrant, busy lifestyle. So don't let the term slow living fool you into thinking that that means slowing down and doing boring things. It means focus. It means intentionality. It means creating a life that you want to live versus just doing what other people expect you to do. It's all of that, all of that wrapped up. So how might you take some of these fundamentals of slow living and change your life just a little bit? How can you incorporate them into your day-to-day -day activities? How can you think about planning your life in a different way that allows you the space and time to be more intentional, to be more focused, to be more in the moment, and really get as much as possible out of the things you choose to do? How are you going to do that? 